Okay, so Payday 3's first content update is here, and it's pretty damn good. The game is starting to reflect what I reckon we all would have wanted it to look like at launch, and given that we're getting another update within the next month, I feel like I can confidently say that the Payday 3 hype train has officially left the station. I can't believe that event was nearly 10 years ago now, Jesus Christ. So what exactly did we get in this update? Well, as we've discussed in previous videos, we got two brand new legacy heists in the form of Cookoff and Turbid Station. I'll be making a separate video on each of those heists, so watch this space for those. And there were also two new cosmetic items in the form of the Under Wraps Mask and Lycan Preset Weapon, both reasonably priced and pretty good looking cosmetics if you ask me. This update also saw the addition of the long-awaited Transporter skill line, most notably granting heisters the ability to carry two bags at once while also providing some other perks relating to bag carrying and just sort of transportation of loot in general. First person animations also make their debut alongside weapon inspects, giving a much needed increase to the pace of some interactions. No longer does it feel like bagging up some loot takes forever. Despite the time it takes to do so staying the same, these new animations really increase the perceived speed at which these interactions happen and overall bring a nice sheen of polish to the game. When it comes to progression, this update changes a fair bit, primarily in how the game allows you to track challenge progression. There are now recommended challenges, general challenges on the main menu, and heist specific ones on the heist page. I'll be honest, this is a great system on paper, but I think there are a few changes that need to be made. Firstly, I'd remove challenges with 0% completion from the pool of challenges that can be recommended, and allow me to give you an example to clarify what I mean by that. One of my recommended challenges at the moment is Easy Pickings 3 for the Renfield 900S, defeat 200 enemies with the weapon. What's wrong with that, you may ask? Well, nothing at first, until I head over to my full list of combat challenges where it quickly becomes apparent that I'm closer to completing other challenges, leaving me questioning why that challenge was picked. Additionally, I think a further check should be run to make sure you're being recommended the challenge that you're closest to completing within a given series. Remember, I'm being recommended Easy Pickings 3, but I've not even completed Easy Pickings 1 for the very same weapon. Do you see why the challenge that I'm being recommended seems rather random? And secondly, I'd remove the repeat offender challenges from the pool too. These challenges being the complete X heist Y times on Z difficulty or above. Again, let me explain. Given the sheer quantity of these challenges that exist in the game, currently they're the only heist specific challenges I'm being recommended. Now, again, why is this so bad? Well, why recommend these challenges when there are much more engaging, fun, and frankly, pretty difficult to discover heist specific challenges that exist? Examples of these challenges are being shown on screen now, and if you didn't know about these challenges, you're hardly going to come across them by chance, which to me seems like the reason why a recommended challenge system would exist. But these aren't the challenges getting pushed to players. Anyway, thankfully we now have another way of earning infamy points, heist completion. Simply beating a heist will reward you with IP and you can increase the amount you earn by doing so in stealth and securing all bags. As I've said before, I think the bag bonus should be applied per bag and not just if all bags are secured. A perfect, if a little exaggerated example of why this should be the case is cook-off. If you secure all 19 bags on overkill difficulty, you will receive an outstanding 600 infamy points. But if you only secure 18, you'll only get 40. And that's a lot of value for just one more bag. I also think that the overall amount of infamy points you receive should be increased as currently, if you want to level up at a decent pace, you're still best just grinding out challenges. But but hey, at least you're not incentivized to sit in a bathroom anymore. But that's the bulk of it. Update 1.0.2 in a nutshell. I just want to take a minute to acknowledge that if Payday 3's launch wasn't as tragic as it was, I reckon we would have seen this update a lot sooner. We know that update 1.0.1 was split into two, the second half of that update likely being the 200 bug fixes we got in this one. And I also know that I'm not the only person to recognize that the two cosmetic items we received were likely planned for Halloween. <laughs> And so, going off the assumption that this update was initially planned for October, and DLC 1 syntax error is slated for release in December, I'm gonna hazard a guess and say we'll be getting heists in Payday 3 every two months, alternating between Legacy heists and new Payday 3 heists. That does coincide with the roadmap we have, and while I'm in a betting mood, I'll make my prediction that DLC 1 will launch on Thursday, December 28th. To know if I'm right, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And so with that all said, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, drop a like on the video. If you disliked the video, drop a dislike on the video. Thank you very much for watching once again, and I will see you in the next video.